Now let's say we have a uh, we have a character. Let's call it a letter. And then uh, let's say C R please enter a letter. Then you see the answer into letter. Yeah, I skip the C R just to make the code less complex. So if if else if right. You will check if letter is A or not. Alright? If it is A, C out. Power. Else, you will check again is the letter. Equivalent to E, if it is C out power, else you will check until it comes true, right? That means if all this fail, if it's not A, E, I, O, U, then ultimately you say else C out. The letter is a consonant. <coughs> Alright, so you can imagine how uh, messy the code of nested if else can be sometimes. Now, if we use switch case, you use this for this structure. Switch. What are you testing? You're testing letter, right? Yes. And then the body where you want to do the testing. So the first case is case if it is A. Or if it is E, colon. Or if it is I. Or if it is O. Or if it is U. Then you will see out power. And then, remember, you must break. You must break it. Because if not, you keep on testing the rest. That's why you need a break. So that you jump out from the switch. Remember that. There will be one or two marks for that. Break. Break the switch. Yeah? Get out of the switch. Default, that means... The keyword default means if everything else fails... If everything else fails, then the default will be C out consonant. End of switch. So as you can see, uh, switch base and nested if else, aka if else if statement. 
switch case is a lot simpler meter to write. Yes. Yes. If every, all the test fails, automatically that will be the answer for switch case. Yeah. Now, a little note on performance. Which one is better when it comes to performance? Nasdaq it has is faster. <coughs> Just a little note on performance. And uh, a lot of problems can be solved using nested if else, not necessarily can be represented using switch case. Yeah? Okay, the question is for switch, right? Do we need to have break at every case? No. Okay, it depends on our need. It depends on our need. Uh, now, to illustrate his question, I we want to show another example of switch case. Can I drop this off? Yeah. All right. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> we can use either one. We can use either one. Now, switch case is very convenient to use. It's easy to write, but switch case cannot be used to represent most of the problems that nested if else can. Like the previous example just now, I was trying to turn it into switch case and I have, I'm having some difficulty to do that. Uh, by using some creativity, flags, all those things, I can turn it into switch case, but it looks more complex than if else. So switch case is, in most situations, okay, it's good to use. Okay, the break, the break statement here is to jump out from the switch. Jump out. Yes, we have to switch that from here to here, right? After the break, there may be some extra code, some more code. So if you want to switch, jump out from the switch. Jump out. Jump out. So uh, it's a similar question to him. Uh, I want to come up with another example to illustrate the use of break. Okay, determine if... Okay, do you know me if a letter is power, consonant, full stop, or question mark? Okay? I want to demonstrate the use of break. Determine if a letter is power, consonant, full stop, or question mark. Uh, maybe not letter anymore. Lah. To me, if an input is a vowel, consonant, full stop, a question, or a question mark. Now, this is how it probably looks like. Sha, letter, <coughs> seeing, letter, switch. I want to do the matching of letter, right? I want to match the letter with one of the cases. I want to match letter with one of the cases. So, case, okay, let's say, I want to check, is it a full stop or not? So I will put here, full stop. Right, then, colon, <coughs> not semicolon, eh? colon, C out, it's a full stop. Now, I ignore the break. Eh? Let's say I ignore the break. Case. Question mark. <coughs> See how. It is a uh, question mark. Okay. Then I have it case. A, now due to space, uh, I just simply put there uh, case A, case E. You see, I'm uh, not semicolon, uh, this is colon. Uh, case I, <coughs> case O, case U is a vowel. C out is a vowel. C out. 
Okay, if none of this is correct, then I would I will use default C out its uh, consonant. <coughs> now the question is if I put break and if I don't put break. Now suppose that if I don't put break, yeah, let's say let's say the user Let's say the user type the, the character question mark. So C in is question mark, right? I'm oh, sorry, C in is a full stop. Yes. Now, if we check, is it full stop or not? Yes, it will, it will display full stop. Then if we check, is it question mark? We check this, we check this and check that. But, but, if I put break here, now it is full stop, right? So you check, okay, it is full stop. C out is a full stop, break. The moment it says break, it will jump out from the switch. To the next line after the switch. The switch starts from this curly brace until this curly brace, right? It go to the line just underneath the curly brace, which is under the switch. Yeah? Now, if you don't do that, your code will keep testing, even though it can stop already. Yeah, even though you can stop at this point already because it's full, it's full stop. Let's say the user enters full stop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Now, what if the user enters full, uh, uh, this, question mark? Again, you check this one, you check the second one, it matches, right? By right, it should jump out already, right? Yeah. But it doesn't, you check case A, case E, case I, case O, case U. So, no point doing that, right? So, that's why you will use break after each case. Just remember that every, every case afterwards, you use break. So, yeah. Yeah, this is how we declare it. You must put the single quote. Uh, now, here I'm, I'm using input from a keyboard if the user types full stop. If you use that full stop, it will read into the variable letter. Yes, the variable letter can store full stop. Char, char is not only storing ABC and DZ numbers, but it also stores uh, symbols on the keyboard. Yes. Yeah. You stop. If it is a break, you immediately jump out from the switch. Let's say after the switch, there are some more code. You execute this code. Not out of the program. It jumps out from the switch. If, yeah, this is the switch. Starting from here until curly brace here. It doesn't jump out from the program. Eh? If you want to make it jump out from the program, use return. Use return, jumps out from the program. Yeah. It straight away terminate the program. The return is 1, return 0. So, okay, how about this one? You see, case A, case E, I, O, U, right? Now, colon, case E, there's nothing, there's nothing right. It means that A, E, I, O, U, all these can use C out is a vowel. All of them are sharing. C out is a vowel break. All of them are sharing. So, you want to make them share what you do? You just simply put them, case A, case E, case I. Instead of having some code after the case A, right, you straight away just put them together. So you're combining them. A, E, I, O, U. Okay, how about uppercase A? How about uppercase A? Uppercase A? So, because uppercase A and lowercase A are different, you know? When it comes to keyboard, they are different symbols. So, you just add here. Case A. And still sharing the same. C out is a vowel break. Following? I guess it's the best story. You have to stand up. I, I allow you to stand up. Yeah? Because the screen is. The whiteboard is not tall enough. Yeah. If I don't want break, you're going to everything. Yeah, you check everything. You check everything. So, uh, okay. I think I'm done with switch. 